On April 26, 1986, one of the biggest disasters in the history of nuclear power occurred at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. In the course of the accident, the fourth power unit was destroyed. The destruction was explosive in nature, releasing a huge amount of radioactive substances into the environment. The reactor core itself was completely destroyed. In contrast to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the disaster at Chernobyl resembled the effect of a dirty bomb exploded, with a powerful radioactive contamination as a lethal factor. The burning reactor formed a cloud that scattered radioactive materials over a huge area. It was mostly iodine and cesium nuclides. About 120,000 local residents were evacuated from the affected area. More than half a million people took part in elimination of consequences of the catastrophe. Hundreds of thousands of people died from the consequences of the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The exact figure has not yet been established. The government of the Soviet Union set the task, in addition to the operational work to eliminate the radioactive release from the emergency reactor as soon as possible designers, scientists and designers to develop an isolation structure on the fourth unit of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant to block the deadly ionizing radiation. Scientists in the field of nuclear facility design and construction understood that an emergency power unit needed to be covered with concrete, soil, or heavy material shields through which ionizing radiation could not enter the environment. The joint brainchild was named the sheltering object. Later, the isolation structure was given the unofficial name of sarcophagus. First of all, the developers of the project had to study the level of radiation fields in the area of the destroyed reactor. For this work, several engineering revival vehicles were prepared, on which additional lead shielding against radiation was installed. On May 31st one of the vehicles went to the emergency fourth power unit. The crew understood, if something happened and the car stalled, pulling it out would be very problematic. The radiation power near the breakdown zone reached 2,000 x-rays per hour. To reduce the level of radioactive emissions, it was decided to use helicopters to dump materials into the shaft of the damaged reactor, which will be able to localize the source of the emissions within two weeks. 15,000 tons of lead, marble chips, sand and dolomite were dropped on the destroyed power unit. Even then, engineers had concerns that the lower structure of the emergency power unit might not be able to withstand the additional load from materials dropped from helicopters. Moreover, temperature loads also had a negative effect on the structures. This could lead to subsidence of the reactor and, as a consequence, to radioactive contamination of groundwater to prevent the power unit from subsiding, a huge reinforced concrete monolith was built under it, which was not only a foundation, but also a cooling structure for the power unit. Inside the monolith were placed pipes in which cold water circulated. When designing the shelter facility, 18 variants of this structure were created, but all of them were time-consuming and costly. So it was decided to build the facility using the surviving structures of the emergency power unit. First, on the south and north side of the power unit special protective walls were built up to 12m high. To shield working people from places with high radioactive debris, the third and fourth power units were separated by a huge monolithic slab. It was designed for 30 years of operation. The northern protective wall of the sarcophagus was created from concrete in the form of four ledges. The northern containment wall on the side of the main rubble was made of concrete in the form of four ledges up to 12 meters high. The external formwork of the benches is made of metal panels up to 54 m long and 12 m high and each unit weighing over 100 tons. The western side of the unit is covered with a 1 meter thick and 45 meter high concrete protection wall. The metal bearing frame of the wall was installed with buttress block 6 by 45 meters in size and weighing 92 tons each. To inspect the sites for the future supports, engineers were taken in a special protected cabin suspended from a crane arm to the future construction sites. Chambers with special thick glass were created for this purpose and lead in steel. Specialists hovered over the radiation ruins and inspected the structures of the power unit while in the so-called bathyscaphs. On the south side, with incredible efforts, a huge beam, which was nicknamed Mammoth, was stacked. It weighed 180 tons, measured 70 meters long and 6 meters high. For this beam made two supports, the base of which were fragments of building structures. 
The installation work was carried out with the help of German cranes with a lifting capacity of 650 tons. Without this technology, it would have been virtually impossible to build such a structure. To cover the central hall, a structure consisting of two beams weighing 165 tons was created. It was called the airplane. There was a serious incident connected with this construction that could have turned the course of construction down an unpredictable path. During the installation of this girder, the crane's winch cable broke. There was a good chance that this huge, multi-ton structure would fall into the rector's collapse. But everything was all right. The specialists who were involved in the installation did not leave the construction site for three days and prevented another catastrophe. They had to work in the dark in order to meet the deadlines. The crane operators were guided by cameras when laying the heavy structure. Late at night, the images on the screen deteriorated significantly. The sarcophagus had to be illuminated with something. Then there was a question of where to install the projectors, if we were to build a special mast, it would require additional time. They would also clutter up the construction site and if they were placed farther away the lighting would not be as effective. Then one of the specialists came up with the idea to mount the lights on a balloon and raise them above the sarcophagus under construction. Aeronautical engineers arrived from Dolgoprudny. They had to do work that was not prescribed in any textbook. The area around the sarcophagus was completely packed with construction equipment. In these conditions, it was necessary to deploy a 33-meter long balloon. In addition, the weather was windy. The balloon had to be lifted to a height of only 150 meters. This was the lowest possible lifting height. In addition, the atmospheric turbulence was disturbed by the high construction. Nevertheless, not on the first attempt, but still the balloon was lifted into the air. The builders nicknamed this celestial structure Lustra. During the work one could often hear, guys, turn the chandelier a little to the left, it's dark there, I can't see. When the work came to an end, the envelope of the balloon was buried. By November 1986, the sarcophagus was completely built. It took 400,000 cubic meters of concrete and 7,000 tons of metal to build. 90,000 people were involved in the grandiose construction. When the construction was coming to an end, many people couldn't hold back their tears. One thing was on people's minds, at last we had shut up that damned radioactive volcano. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.